So I'm getting ready to hit year 13 in the music business. And during that time, the one thing that I have never actually done is step foot in a professional studio. As a matter of fact, the closest that I've gotten to stepping it in one is the one that I'm trying to build right now. And during this time, I have made music that's appeared on Spotify playlists regularly. I made music that's appeared on radio shows. I made music that have that has gone much farther than I could have on my own. I performed in different states. I've, I've done prison ministry. I've done all of this stuff with music that I've made in my bedroom and i know that there are a lot of y'all that have a lot of music that you want to make you have a lot of ideas that you want to put out there but you don't have the luxury to go to a studio or even have a professional treatment in the room that you are recording so what i want to do today is i want to kind of show y'all some of the things that i do to make my music sound as professional as possible no matter the setup that you have before we get started i do provide several services as it pertains to music so if you need help with your mixing if you need mixing services i do that if you need beat production i do that if you need graphic design if you need single covers album covers i do all of that so if you're just needing help with getting set up on any of that other stuff uh, even if you need help with songwriting I do all of that, so just feel free to contact me. My info is in the description below, below, or you can just comment and I will get to you. But like I said, today we're just gonna talk about setting things up so you can get that music recorded in the first place. And don't worry, my biggest tip is not gonna be buy the most expensive equipment because there's a lot of other things you have to take into consideration before you even think about buying a, a, a higher price mic, higher price headphones, all that type of stuff. There's other things you need to think about first, so we'll get into that. Now, as a little bit of a proof of concept, I will show you the room that I am recording in now. This is a third bedroom in my house. I've been here for about two years. As you can see, there is no treatment on these walls. Um, this room doesn't even really look good because I have toys and stuff everywhere. Like this is just a regular bedroom. When I started making music, I also recorded in a bedroom in a bedroom similar to this. It was a little bit smaller, but it was also in the bedroom. I moved out of my mom's house in 28, uh, 2019, moved into a uh, three bedroom house. I used a bedroom there. I tried recording in closets. I tried recording in in bathrooms and again now i'm converting my shed to a studio now so i've been in a lot of different spaces and so i found some tips that work no matter what space that you're in and these are what i'm going to show you the first thing and i feel one of the biggest things that you need to focus on is finding the best time to record now when i say time to record i am not talking about physical time i'm not talking about six o'clock nine o'clock i'm talking about a time where you are most comfortable recording if you're new to making music, you'll, you'll learn this quickly that there is a difference between just singing something, walking around the house and singing something and singing something into a, into a mic. There are things that the mic pick, picks up that your ears may not pick up when you're singing something live or when you're rapping something live. The mic is going to pick that up. And so sometimes we have these newer artists, and I, I know a couple of them myself, um, we record the music and put the music out but when your listener listen to the music they can hear that you're you're quietly rapping it or you're you're, you're unsure as you're rapping it. you're unsure as you're singing it that comes through and to a lot of people they're, they're gonna say that it, that it sucks it may not suck the the music may be great the lyrics may be great but if you don't rap or sing the lyrics with confidence it's gonna come through on that mic. It comes through on that mic every time. There is a difference. So when I say find time, I'm talking about finding a time where you are comfortable, where you're able to let loose, uh, in case you need to yell, scream, growl, whatever you gotta do. Find a time that is comfortable. For a lot of people, that time is just gonna be when nobody else is at home. When, when, when you can just do whatever and you ain't gotta worry about nobody laughing at you. Sometimes you have to do that. So, sometimes you're, you're in a space where you know your, your family members may not believe in what you're doing or, or you know they're not really involved in that they don't know the process and so it's more comfortable to record when they're not there i can use myself for example when i started making music i was actually making christian hip-hop uh, christian hip-hop music christian rap music um and so it was christian music and i grew up in a really conservative like family um so even though i was i was doing christian rap to them it was rap they didn't like it you know, they, they kind of came around, but they didn't even like it. So, of course, I had to make sure nobody was home because I couldn't even be as loud as I wanted to be. I couldn't sing like I needed to because I was in a family full of people that didn't want no part of it. And even when they did come around, it just wasn't a safe spot to record as far as my mental state because of the people that I was around. And so I actually 
moved from my bedroom to an outside uh, garage closet at my mom's house. It was like a six by eight space. I couldn't even fit a table in there. That, that's how small it was. If I can find a picture, I'll put it on screen. But um, I moved to that space. And the only reason I did that is because that's where I was comfortable. And I wasn't comfortable physically. Again, there, there was no heat in there. I was outside recording. So there was no heat in there. I had an air conditioner in there, but and we'll talk about that later. I had to turn the air conditioner off when I was recording. So it was some hot days. It was some cold days. But because I was so comfortable, because I could get as loud as I needed to get, that, that stuff didn't come through in the music. The confidence came through. You know what I'm saying? That the confidence came through. So that's the first thing is that finding a time where you are comfortable and where you can let loose is going to be one of the most important things when it comes to getting that sound that you want. Now, I want to talk about the room for a bit. Again, I know that a lot of us are going to be in bedrooms or we're going to be in a family room. We're going to be in some type of room where we can't throw up acoustic foam everywhere and we can't treat it. So um, here are just a couple things that will help you still get the sound that you the first thing that i want to do is kind of dispel the myth there are a lot of people especially during soundcloud days going in bathrooms and places like that and recording i'm telling you now that's the worst thing that you can do because when you're recording and in i guess it's a little sound theory lesson your your anything that sound that is made will bounce off nearby walls it'll bounce off you know certain surfaces your bathroom is usually one of the places that has that has the most reflections. And the last thing that you need is reflections in your audio when you're recording. It's going to be an unintentional echo. It's going to be, you know, unintentional interference. And when you go to mix it, it's going to sound worse than, than it was when you recorded it. So if you have a bedroom and you're thinking about going into your bathroom, don't do it. Your closet can work for reasons we'll talk about later. But either your bedroom or your closet. Do not do the bathroom and do not do and this is one of the other things open spaces are actually sometimes more detrimental than you think when it comes to a residential house uh now you know you can go on the go on the movies or go on media you know online and you see you know these people standing in the open room recording but a lot of times that's in the studio setting the the room that they're in is still padded but you don't ever want to record in a place to where if you're loud it echoes or it reverberates or it does anything like that you don't want to you don't want to record in that because any echo and any delay that you want in your vocals that needs to come from your computer it does not need to come from your surroundings so the good thing about a bedroom is that a lot of times a bedroom is not huge so you don't have that issue but that is something to be aware of the next thing is that you want to keep your mic away from walls i've seen people put their mic against the wall a lot of times you do not want to do that because again, even if it's a regular wall, it can have some type of reflection depending on how loud you're singing. If you got this mic right up against the wall, that is going to, to hurt your vocals. So try to get, and a lot of times it's not possible to get to the center of the room because your bed's in there somewhere, but try to get as far away from a wall as possible. Um, for example, I'm sitting at my desk right now. I'm gonna see if I can do this without hurting the camera, but you see where my mic is right now. I tried to keep it as far away from the wall over here as possible. So it's typically sitting right here. Of course, I have it where it is now for this video. Um, but you want to keep it away, as far away from the wall as possible to keep from um, to keep from those reflections like we were talking about. If you are in a space where there are reflections, one of the things you can do, and you may have seen people do this before, is that you can pin up blankets or you can put, if you got a surface that you know is reflected, you can't just throw a, a thick blanket over it may look a little bit ghetto but it works and that's why sometimes recording in a closet is a good idea and i see people go in their closet and then take the clothes out of the closet if it's possible leave the clothes in there and stretch them out put the mic in the middle because them clothes will keep that sound from reverberating so if you have to use a closet you don't have to empty the closet unless you're just trying to you know get your instagram video then you can take your clothes out do whatever whatever but when recording it's actually good to keep those clothes hung up and don't you don't want them right on the mic um but just keep them in the room and if there's reflective surfaces in there them clothes will actually help with that and i mean that go that does go into the next tip which is using furniture to absorb sound a lot of times the furniture that you have can can basically break up those reflections and keep that from happening the good thing about being in your bedroom is that you most likely have a bed in there that's going to help with that 
you, you may have some people have a sofa or a couch in there if you have stuff like that most of the time you're good if you're near that bed it will help up break up break those reflections but that also goes hand in hand with again staying away from the wall but if you can't fit more furniture in your room having more furniture in there will help keep those reflections from tearing up your sound on the flip side of that one thing that you do want to do is declutter your space and when i say declutter a lot of times i'm talking about your wires i'm talking about you know your connections and stuff like that especially when, when you start trying to record and you got a mic cord you know you may have an interface you got an interface cord you got a camera hooked up camera cord you know phone charger computer charger you we know you need all that stuff but you have to declutter it to keep from keep extra noise from going into your signal, especially if you have certain mics like this mic right here. This is a $500 mic. I still have to keep my ring light away from this mic because if they get too close, it causes interference, tears up the sound. That can happen to you too, depending on what you have hooked up in your room. And depending on if you got if you got the wires all tangled up and stressed out of each other, it's actually gonna tear up your sound. You may not even hear it until you, you're, you're done recording. You done put the mic up and now, you, now you're hearing a high pitch whine. Not only that, it's way too easy to, while you're recording, hit the desk, hit something, your foot may hit a wire. You got a condenser mic. Your condenser mic's picking all that up. And you're trying to make it as quiet as possible. And literally, just moving too far to the left to the right, right while you're recording, bumping into something will tear up your whole recording. So make sure you declutter your space. Um, you can buy some cable managers at Walmart and stuff like that, or just just find a way to tuck the wires into it. You're not you're not tripping over wires, you're not kicking over wires, and make sure that especially if you have a mic like this with a cloud lifter, make sure before you start recording that you that you don't have any interference because a lot of clutter can cause that to happen. One one of the biggest things that causes issues with recording is ambient noise. Now again, we cannot get all of the ambient noise out of a recording in a bedroom. Well, let me rephrase that. We can't always get it out, but there's a lot of it that we can mitigate. One of the most important things that people forget about is your air conditioning, your heat, and the fan that's in the room. If you can help it, you need to turn all that off while you're recording. Like, get 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 rid of it all. And I understand that, you know, that I'm recording this in the middle of summer, it's hot right now. Um, if I was in a situation where there was an issue, uh, in this specific house, I don't have that issue because the, the AC is somewhere else. But, um, if you have, for example, a wall unit and you need to record, try to turn the unit on, you know, before you record, maybe an hour or two before you record, get the room to the temperature you want it to be and then cut it off. Same goes, get, same goes for your heat. Because even if it's quiet to you, your condenser mic, especially if you got a condenser mic, is going to pick that up and we need no sound. Again, this may make you uncomfortable physically. Again, like I, said, I talked about the, the shed that I used to live in, or that, that I used to record out of. That shed, if I wanted to record at eight o'clock, I had to go out there and turn the air on at four, and then let it run until I got out there at eight, turn it off, and then get my recording done as quick as possible, because eventually it's gonna get hot, and I can't stay in there no more. <laughs> but that's just how it is. I mean, when, when you're in a bedroom situation, you gotta do what you gotta do. So the name of the game, regardless of the type of mic you have, regardless of what you're working with, um, is just getting that cleanest recording possible. And like we've been talking about, again, to me, the main thing is confidence. Um, then you have your reflections, and then you talk about your ambient noise. So you have, these are your three main things that you have to focus on if you want to get a high quality sound, regardless of your setup. And when I say regardless of your setup, I'm not exaggerating. I've on, I've been recording music for 13 years. I've only had this mic for a year. Uh, I was recording on the Elgato Wave 3 at one point, which is a, a gaming mic. Um, actually, with you, most of y'all follow me because of with you, the video of my daughter and stuff like that. I recorded that on a gaming mic. You know what I'm saying? Before that, uh, half of the songs on my last album, Journeys 2, was recorded on a Blue Yeti mic that you get out of Walmart. And all, the quality is consistent across most of my songs. I finally bought a Rode NT1A. I got it in there because I want to get into voice acting and then I bought the share right after. I still have only recorded two songs with this because it doesn't matter the mic if you get the quality right. It doesn't matter the mic if you can get the setup right. So that's why it, it, I'm just passionate about making sure your, your environment is right. Because if you get your environment right, then you can make magic regardless of where you are. But that's all I have for today. I know that I do have some engineers and stuff to follow me. Y'all may have more tangible tips. 
feel free to drop them down in the comments of this video let's help each other out again i do have the mixing services the graphic design the um the beat, beat production so make sure you hit me in any of my socials in the description i appreciate you guys so much uh i got I, 21 questions just dropped last week i'm already working on the song for september with that being said i appreciate you guys so much see y'all next video